and welcome to the Tech Metals Tuesday series. I'll be your host. My name is Rebecca Jenkins, and I'm the head of marketing and one of the founders at TMN Global. And we are going to do a deep dive into these metals, uh, technology metals and rare earth metals. Most people know about precious metals. It's more widely known, more widely traded. And the prices are are open for people to see, you know, on uh, the exchanges. Now, the technology metals and rare earth metals, on the other hand, are not. And so that's something that we're going to be discussing over this uh, series, Tech Metals Tuesday. Every Tuesday, well, there'll be new updates, new videos, or blog posts that we'll be posting, giving you information to to learn more about technology metals. What are their uses? What, uh, where do they come from? What are their pricing from the past? And, and what are the forecasts for the future? So we are going to start our, we're going to kick off our series today with Indium. And Indium is, uh, is a really awesome uh, technology metal. And actually Indium is my personal favorite metal because, uh, which I'll, I'll tell you about in just a few minutes, but it's it's used for touch screens and I am in marketing digital marketing I use touch screens every single day and I wouldn't know what it, <laughs> at this point I wouldn't know what to do without my touch screen without my smartphone so indium is definitely near and dear to my heart and my career and um and so this is going to be a, a part one of a two-part uh talk about indium and we're gonna go through what is Indium? When did we start using Indium? When did the world start really using this metal in everyday life? And when did the demand really take off for that? Um, what is the use in the real world for, for the metals? Like what types of technology, what types of, of things do uh, require Indium to create their products? and where to find the pricing. This is a really, really big question because uh, there's a lot of misinformation online about finding the pricing for technology metals and rare earth metals. So we're gonna clear that up today. And, uh, and who buys Indium? That's also a really great question that we're gonna dive into. Part two will be our second video about Indium where we'll go through the performance history over the past few years, how the, how the metal has performed and then also the potential in the future of what uh, of what people have planned for the innovations of technology and how um, how it's looking for the future of, of the metal. So to start off, what is endium? Uh, we're going to go there. Where does it come from? Who discovered it? Is it toxic? Where did the name come from? What is its form? So um, so endium comes from China and it's mined out of uh out of out of china so it's actually delivered directly uh, from china to to our facilities here in europe and um indium as you can see here indium its atomic number is 49 uh, atomic weight 114 and the symbol in the periodic table of elements if we remember back in in chemistry class in high school the you know indium is actually listed in that in that periodic table of elements and i'm going to show you in just a minute um it doesn't dissolve in in water but it will dissolve in, in acid and it has like a crystal structure so it's it's physical it's in a physical state in uh, room temperature and um and like like i said it's delivered in like a bar form so when we receive it here in europe it's delivered in a bar form. And there's a lot of technology metals, rare earth metals that come in more of like a powder form. I think it's called an oxidized form, but indium comes in a bar form. So here's the periodic table of, of elements that I was just referring to that we, that we saw very much in our chemistry class back in high school. And as you can see, indium is smack dab on the right hand side in the middle. And um, and so indium is classified as a technology metal, and um, there is differences between technology metals and rare earth metals. We'll dive we'll dive more into that when we um, get further into our series. But for today, we'll keep it pretty simple and and tell you the main stuff of what you need to know about indium. 
Um, so this is the 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 first question is where does it come from? It comes from China. Um, who discovered it? That's a great question, and um, we're actually going to we're going to pull up the the EMHAG website, and it, there's a really inform informative article that EMHAG has that goes through all the different metals. If you want to do some some extra reading on your own time, you could totally pull up this website, and you can look at all of the metals. And so, you know, back in 1863, indium was discovered actually by two Germans in Freiburg. And the name, the names of these chemists were Ferdinand Reich and Theodore Richter. And um, Freiburg is actually not too far from where I'm staying right now in Southern Germany. And they discovered it 130 years before the phone was, was ever invented. So a long, long time ago, and so they discovered it and it was used mainly in World War II as a component of, of bearings, coatings, and aircraft engines. So that's what it was mainly used for, for war, for um, uh, machinery, for things like that. And then later on, you know, it was used in, in phones. And then we'll get more into that, how the demand really spiked back in the early 2000s and why it did that. So the the... The name from Indium come, comes from the Latin term indicum, which means indigo, because when the when the German chemist was looking through this like um, this, it was like a like a microscope, the they actually he was colorblind, but he saw this in this indigo, this this violet line that was going through the metal. And so that's where the, the word indic indium came from was this Latin word for, for, for indigo or violet. So the characteristics you can see here is actually a picture of indium. This is what it looks like. And it's you can see it's like this lustrous, shiny, uh, silvery color. And um, it looks really hard like steel, but it's super soft. Like it's almost like molding clay. And you can actually cut indium with a knife. Which is really really interesting it's it's you can take your fingernail and make imprints in it it's very moldable metal and it's non-toxic to the touch but of course you don't want to ingest it you don't want to ingest it or, or will be or will be toxic um but you know just to touch it to hold it it's non it's non-toxic okay so we know where where it comes from we know who discovered it it's non-toxic unless you ingest it of course but you really don't want to be ingesting any metals it's really not uh it's not safe uh, where did the name come from? It, come, it came from that violet streak that they saw um, when looking under the microscope. And what is its form? Its form is it comes in this bar, this bar form. But actually, when they take it out of the ground, it's mixed with several other uh, metals like copper and, um, and zinc. And so actually, it has to be smelted down to get that pure form of indium. So when did we start using indium this is a great question so of course it was discovered 130 years before the smartphone was created for before cell phones were created um and it was used for for war and for other machinery but you know when did the demand really start taking off for for this metal and that was actually when the the creation the in the development of apple started so back in 2007 the first apple iPhone was created and and that's really when we saw the performance of indium really take off and explode in in its price because there was such a huge demand for touchscreens and um, starting when Apple had its first iPhone that's when the world of touchscreens really exploded and then after 2007 going into you know the following years everything started becoming with touchscreen there was you know then there after the iphone became the ipad and then the tablets uh, from uh, samsung and then there we started seeing touchscreens in uh, fast food restaurants like mcdonald's we started seeing touchscreens in our cars we started seeing touchscreens more in our household appliances like refrigerators 
And so, and so the explosion of touchscreens and the fascination with touchscreens really started in 2007. And so that's when the demand really started taking off. And um, that's when we really started using Indium in our everyday life as like a modern um, technology. So what is its use case in the real world? I did mention uh, quite a few just now, but we'll kind of go through these again. So it started as a component of bearing coatings and aircraft engines in World War II. And then of course, touchscreens um, came into, into play back in 2007 with the iPhone and all the smartphones wanting to have touchscreens. The reason why Indium is used for touchscreens is because it's, a tra it's transparent and it combines with well with glass so it's just this this metal that works really well to um, help the touchscreen function glass alone would not be enough to make the touchscreen they need to have the indium metal to to react to um, make it function correctly and then it's for lcd lcd led displays and i'm sure if you if you have um any uh, newer car with lights and everything going on when you, you know when you when you turn, put your key in the ignition and the car turns on, you see all of the lights all over your car and those are LEDs and every car has them and it's absolutely um, vital to have indium to make that function correctly. And the indium compounds also play an important role in thin film photovoltaics. Thin film photovoltaics, that is a mouthful. Um, it's actually solar cell technology, in particular, SIGS thin film processes and nanotechnology. So we're talking about green energy here. So anytime you see solar panels on the roof, solar panels uh, collecting energy from sunlight, that actually is due to indium being um, in that technology. And so indium is actually very important to green energy and um and solar and solar panels as well so those are real world applications that indium is used for so it's very very important it is a super um vital i would say it's a critical metal to have in our modern world and as you can see here is you know a couple pictures of what we use every single day cars solar panels uh laptops phones and and much much more i mean televisions with the that we that we use our flat screens those are all things that require indium to to function so this is a big question that we get a lot where can i find the prices for indium i want to go on google i want to go on duckduckgo or yahoo and i want to i want to find the prices well you cannot and the reason for that is um and i'll kind of give you a little bit of information so don't get precious metals confused with technology metals and rare earth metals they're separate and precious metals you can go online and find the market price for the day for gold for silver for precious metals and that is because the, those metals are traded on exchanges live there are exchanges that trade with these precious metals and that is why there is a set price on the other hand, technology metals and rare earth metals do not um, do not have this because they're not traded on any exchanges anywhere. And being that our partners EMHAG are the market leaders in Europe for technology metals and rare earth metals, that is huge because they are receiving prices twice a week directly from the source for for what the you know what the weekly price is for these metals and so that is something that uh we are receiving a wholesaler price so it's actually a cheaper price even um than what you may find online is a lot of misinformation the the prices you may see online you might find indium you might find gallium or some of the other technology metals but they'd be a lot more expensive than the actual price that we are getting and or the, the prices are not correct or they're not the current price for that week for in the moment. Because of course, you know, just like any asset, the price is fluctuating. And so you want to have the most current and of course the best price possible 
um, an up-to-date price that you can have as an investor to, to know what you're getting into. So this is actually a huge opportunity for TMN Global uh, to build this, uh, this technology to show the live active price like an exchange and um, and share that with our community. And that's something that no one is doing anywhere in the world right now. And so that's something that we are, are planning on doing and we're building currently with a TMN Global online shop as we build out this shop to accept TMNG tokens for purchasing uh, the technology metals and rare earth metals. So who buys Indium? That's a really great question. Uh, who buys Indium? Originally, businesses and large investors bought Indium because it's it's a huge um, it's a huge cost and time drain to purchase the metals from China. You have to have the contacts. You have to um, know the right people who are going to be send you know giving you the the right metals. Then you have to have the processing. Uh, equipment and resources to be able to make sure that those metals are are in their purest form and you have to also uh, you have to confirm do an audit of the metals that they once they're sent over to, to here in Europe that the metals are 99.9 percent uh, that is indium and it's not 90 percent pure because then at that point, the the uh, the industry is not going to accept the 90%, but they require the, the quality and the caliber of the reputation that EMHAG has built for their customers. And that is a very, very high quality, very, very high purity. And that's why, again, they're the market leader for these commodity uh, commodity trading, because they have built up this reputation of delivering really high quality stuff. And it takes a lot of resources and a lot of infrastructure in order to be able to do it the right way. Now, that being said, you know, the only large investors and large corporations, large industry uh, companies were able to purchase the metals in the past. But EMHAG and now TMNG, TMN Global, um, have made it possible for the small investors to participate. And this is huge because before EMHAG existed, it wasn't possible to save in technology metals or rare earth metals. And so you can actually save, you can buy indium um, or other technology metals, rare earth metals um, for as little as 100 euros a month. And that is a huge advantage for someone that wants to get into the saving in these um, these high performing mega commodities where maybe they don't have a lump sum of money laying around, but they still want to over time build up their portfolio in these diverse metals and see, you know, over time, see that portfolio grow and um, and so EMHAG and now Team and Global, we have partnered to offer this via the blockchain to users on our platform and our community members. So this is really, really cool. This is the first and only blockchain company in the world that is offering this opportunity. And it's a really great advantage for our for our people to get involved in, in purchasing these really amazing metals. So now I'm gonna pull up the website and I'm going to show you what we currently have uh, in there and then in part two we'll go through the the prices for the last three years and the forecast for you know the next uh, 10 20 years of what the demand is looking like in the industry for these metals okay so here are our um, metals and this is in the if you go to the, the dashboard and click on products you'll see all of the current metals that we have uploaded into the back office. And so as you can see, the first four are all of our precious metals. So gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Like I said before, these are our, these are all listed on uh, you know, public exchanges and are already being traded. So there's already these, these costs that are being pulled 
from the London fixing for, for those. And then we go into dysprosium, presidium, neodym. Those are our, our rare earth elements. And then we go into some technology metals, indium. And these are not yet loaded, but we have the numbers and we are loading those, those very soon. And so you'll actually be able to see the performance on a weekly basis with all of these metals. And it's really cool because it's the first in the world that will be tracking the prices like like we are. So as you can see, indium is here and um, this is just part one. So I don't have the prices to show you today, but in our part two, I will show you the prices from the last three years, including this year, 2022. And you can see how the, the prices have gone up and down over the last couple of years. And we'll also talk a little bit about the forecast for the demand from now until 2040 and what that looks like. So that's it for part one for Indium, our technology metal of the day. I hope you learned a little something about this technology metal that you did not know before. If you have any questions, you can please uh, chat below in the comment section and would love to answer those in our part two video where we go over the prices and some of the forecasted demand uh, between now and 2040. But until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and see you in the next video. Ciao.